Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Anthony Sicola, Director of Sales for Overland Expo, and this is uh, Sir Digby, uh, our 10-year-old Jack Russell Terrier. He's been all over most of the western United States and Canada as well, and he's also been all the way through Baja. Um, we learned a lot by having him on trips with us, and I hope to share some of our knowledge with you uh, in this presentation. Um, if you don't currently travel with your dog, there's just a few things to think about before you take that first trip. And if you do already travel with your dog, you're going to know a lot of this stuff, but I hope there's a couple of aha moments in there for you too. So what do you bring with you? Um, so some of the essential things are obviously food, water, um, bowls so that your dog can eat. Um, a bed for your dog, whether that bed is in the back of your rig or if it's up in the tent with you, uh, we call it the rooftop den. Um, and uh, some treats and snacks, because who doesn't want treats and snacks on a camping trip? And um, obviously always bring your leash, collar, harness, tie out, and make sure your dog is microchipped. Uh, bring on any toys, bring uh, a first aid kit for your dog. Um, those are really important. Uh, you know, I mean, think about all the things that your dog could get into when you're out in the back country. So, um, you know, we like to have Benadryl just in case, uh, you know, he, he gets into, uh, you know, something that he's not supposed to. Um, and then any kind of meds that you, that you have for your dog. Um, and, uh, yeah, just make sure that those are all filled before you take your trip and you're going to be in a really good situation. Um, another thing to think about is poop bags. So who wants to see poop all over a campsite? No one. Um, so make sure you bring your poop bags and make sure you use them. There is no poop fairy. So um, yeah. So there's some essential vaccinations that you have to have if you plan to cross any kind of borders with your dog. Um, your pet must be healthy, it must look healthy, and be well-groomed or it can be turned away at any border. Um, it's required that all pets are up to date with rabies shots and other vaccinations, so you want to carry your documents from your vet certifying the general good health of your dog, and you want to bring those vaccination records with you. Um, check each border crossing before you arrive so you aren't surprised because some are different and uh, you don't want to be caught with something that you don't have. Um, some of the core vaccinations that you need are uh, rabies. Uh, make sure that they have the rabies shot. Really, that's the only one that we've ever had any, any, um, anyone ask about. Uh, they really want to see the rabies shot. Um, and some of the others to think about are uh, CAV2, which is distemper, parvo, adenovirus, and um, leptospiro. Leptospirosis is a pretty nasty uh, bacterial disease. Um, that can really make your dog very, very sick and even kill it. So um, you want to think about that, especially in places where dogs are gathering. Um, so yeah, it's super important. Um, some of the non-core vaccinations that you might want to consider are canine parafluenza and bordetella. That's kennel cough. Um, you want to just, uh, you know, if, if any dogs are ill in any of the places that you go to, you don't want your dog catching anything. And, um, you know, canine influenza and then Lyme disease as well. So those are the important ones. Um, but, you know, let your vet tell you what's right for your dog. So what are some of the things that you're going to do? Like there's a few scenarios uh, that, you know, like I like to think about when we're when before we head out on the head out on the trail. So what do you do if you're um, if you're around camp? So you want to keep your dog on the same schedule as much as possible, including feeding and walks. It'll make your buddy way more comfortable. Um, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you have a leash and a tie out for your dog. Um, we often let Digby off leash when we're in a camp area alone, but when any other people and or animals are nearby, we always keep him on a tie out so he doesn't bother anyone. Um, I mean, he's pretty chill, but you know, we don't want him going and barking at anyone or, or getting involved in a, in an animal fight of any kind. So, um, you want to bring a dog bed or some sort of outdoor cot, um, just something that can, uh, lift him up off the dirt. So he's not always in the dirt unless your dog likes to be in the dirt and then you're good to go. Um, we prefer outdoor materials that are easy to clean and water resistant. And um, you want to also just make sure that you pick up your dog poop. I know I said it before, but it's like I can't tell you how many times I've been in a really great campsite and there's dog poop like chilling on the side. Just clean it up. It's really not that hard. 
it's also just one of those things. It's like, it's a leave no trace kind of thing. So just, just clean up after your dog. It'd be super cool. Um, so what do you do when you're on the trail? Um, you want to make sure that, number one, your friend is even allowed to be on the trails. Um, lots of state parks and national parks, they don't even allow dogs on trails. Um, so just make sure beforehand that, you know, you're not breaking any laws. Um, and then just make sure that, you know, that, that they're allowed. Um, you'll always want to leash your dog if you're on a, if you're on a trail that's, that's, uh, you know, being used by hikers. Um, why you ask? Well, a leashed pup is a safe pup. So you want to keep your buddy away from natural hazards like cliffs, boulders, rivers, all of those things that, you know, he might walk off if, uh, if, if he weren't on a leash. Um, you know, the other reason is just to be uh, courteous to other trail users. Um, you know, not everybody loves dogs. And so you just want to make sure that you're not, uh, not, you know, you're just being courteous. That's, I think it's a good thing. So the other reason you want to have a leash is to respect wildlife. Digby here, he'll chase any squirrel, any chipmunk, or any other small animal he sees. It's fun for him. He won't hurt him. He just bugs him. But it's still, it's not very respectful to the wildlife. So a leash keeps him and other forest critters safe. So what do you do when you're out seeing sights? So there's a few questions you need to ask yourself here. Um, are dogs even allowed? So most national forests and BLM lands, they allow dogs, but some don't. So um, most national parks and some state parks will not even allow dogs on trails. So the same goes for historical monuments and ruins. So make sure you know this before you go um, and make sure you have a plan. So like, what's your plan if dogs aren't allowed? Are you gonna board your dog for a day? Um, are you gonna get a pet sitter? Um, does your partner hang back and watch the fur kid? Um, make sure you have everything covered and make it easy, make it easier for yourself and make it more enjoyable for you. And never, and I mean never, leave your dog inside a vehicle on a hot day. Even on an 80 degree day where it's super chill for us, it takes only 10 minutes for the temperature in a parked car to get up to 100 degrees. And that's painful and it's really no way to treat your furry friend. So, um, you know, just please don't leave your dog in a car ever. Yeah. So the other thing you wanna think about is uh, how you're gonna sleep. Are you in a ground tent or a rooftop tent? Have you tested having your dog sleep with you in a tent? Um, that might be something you want to test out before taking a long trip with your dog. You might want to go on an overnight or even just test it out in your driveway or backyard. Um, does your buddy like to sleep in the same tent with you? Well, yeah, I mean, Digby loves it. He sleeps in our rooftop tent. Uh, like I said, we call it the rooftop den. Um, and he, uh, after the first night, he really loved it. Um, but, you know, consider how you'll get your dog into the tent and how you'll get them out daily. Um, that might not be such a big deal for a ground tent, but if you're, you know, putting your dog into a rooftop tent, you want to make sure that they're comfortable doing it before you um, go and do it on your own. So, uh, do you need to create any kind of space inside your rig for your pet to sleep? Um, so some dogs, they don't like to sleep with you, so you'll need to find a spot in your rig to set up their sleeping area. Um, consider the heat, the cold, um, make sure they have enough water to last the night. And that's a really good one to, to, to just, you know, think of in general. Um, I mean, dogs just need water uh, a lot, so make sure you're always carrying it with you, carry it on the trail, carry it in your rig, uh, put it up in your tent with you, just so your dog can get a drink of water when he or she needs it, so. You know, you can buy processed food um, and, you know, you can pretty, buy, pretty much buy that regularly on the road. Or you can make your dog fresh food. Um, you know, it, the things that you need to think about is how you're going to store it, where you're going to store it. Are you going to be able to find a good place um, that you can easily access it when you're on the road? Um, how long is it going to last? Um, and do you have any kind of backups just in case? We make Digby fresh food, and we find that it's really hard to kind of keep in a, even in a refrigerator uh, in the back of our truck uh, because it does take up a lot of room. But he, uh, we started making him fresh food, and he won't eat anything else now, <laughs> so he's a little spoiled. I don't know if you can tell. So the other thing to think about is water. Um, how much do you need? for you and, and your dog. So just like you, dogs require approximately one ounce of water per pound of body weight. 
uh, per day. So a dog like Digby, who's 20 pounds, needs about 20 ounces of water a day. And that's minimum. Um, a lot of things can affect how much, uh, how much this, you know, this little guy will drink. Um, like the environmental temperature, if it's hot, you're going to drink more water. If you're exercising um, vigorously, you're going to uh, want to drink more water as well. Um, so just make sure you're bringing enough for you and your friend. Um, it's super important and uh, you know the one of the main reasons why people can't spend more time out in the backcountry um, is simply because they run out of water and they need to replenish. So um, just bring enough to make sure that, that you can stay out as long as you want to. So for food and water, uh, we use uh, collapsible rubber bowls um, and uh, they're really great. They, uh, they take up very little space in the truck and um, they're really easy to clean as well. So I um, highly recommend uh, picking up some of those if you don't already have something like that. We've tried the fabric ones, but they tend to leak and uh, I just don't like them. So um, you'll probably at some point need to keep your dog healthy when you're on the road. Um, depending on the length of your trip, you'll probably need to find a vet in the country or in the state that you're traveling in um, for routine care checkups, to prescribe medicines, and to kind of help administer um, booster vaccines if you need them. Um, the easiest way to find a vet is really just to Google it. Um, Google uh, a veterinarian in the town that you're in and uh, read Yelp reviews, read Google reviews, and uh, that's probably one of the best ways to uh, find somebody that's trustworthy. Um, if you're in an emergency situation, um, it's important to be as prepared as you possibly can before you get out there into the backcountry. Um, we had a um, we had a, a work trip uh, with everyone from Overland Expo one year where we were out at Marble Canyon, and uh, Digby got sick. Uh, this happened at, in the evening on a on a Saturday, and uh, he continued to be sick through the night and we, uh, we, you know, we didn't feel like it was safe to, to drive out at that point. We were probably 15 miles off road at that time. So, um, and it was dark and we just didn't want to drive out. So we waited until the morning. He was, he was still okay by then, but kind of listless. Uh, we ended up having to drive four hours to get to, uh, to get to uh, St. George, Utah. Um, and it was, uh, it was a very, very long trip and it was, it was really scary. So, um, you know, I think about those things now when I'm, when I'm planning my trips, so, um, yeah, so in conclusion, um, it is super fun to, to travel with your dog or your cat or your ferret or your bird or your iguana or whatever you want to travel with. Um, but just make sure that it's, uh, you know, that, that you can take those animals across borders um, and uh, make sure that they can stay healthy when they're on the road because the most important thing is making sure that they're uh, taken care of in a really good way. Um, it's super fun to travel with him. He makes our lives better and uh, I can't imagine traveling without a dog. So I hope you, uh, hope you learned a little bit and uh, hope you take your pets on the road with you. All right. Yeah, so thanks for joining us, and uh, we're happy to have you here for Overland Expo Virtual West. Thanks, and have a great day.